You've been called by God and you are so special to him. I want you to stay tuned because my guest today is going to share with you just how to know the call and your destiny. Now is the time to go forward and become all that God has intended for you to become. Today is your day to change your life and live in victory and wholeness. This is Your Path to Destiny with Dr. Candace Smithman. Welcome to Your Path to Destiny. I'm Dr. Candace Smithman, and I'm your life coach, trainer, and your personal mentor. And today I'm excited to share with you how important you are to God. You are so special to Him, and He has a plan, a purpose, and a destiny for your life. And we're going to talk about that today because my guest has written an amazing book called Knowing Your Destiny, Reaching Your Goal, and he has lots of knowledge and understanding about tapping into your destiny. My my guest today is Pastor Siegfried Tomaszewski, and he worked for 18 years with evangelist Reinhard Bonnke in the CFAN Ministries. He also has his own ministry called Calling Ministry and is the CEO of One God, One Day, One Africa, which is a very large uh, African crusade that is going to be taking place very soon. So I want to welcome today Pastor Siegfried. Well, thank you so much, Candice. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be here on your show. Well, it's an honor for me to have you. you. And I, um, I truly am blessed by your humility. You have had the opportunity to minister to thousands of people in very, very large crusades. And you, all, you, you have a heart for the one. And, and I want to talk about that today because when people are thinking about knowing their destiny, their Father God, who ministers to millions of us, cares just about them. So tell us, what is it like to minister in a crusade where there's thousands and thousands of people? Well, of course, I, I love to talk to hundreds of thousands of people, and um, the more the better, because the chances are greater for people to receive Jesus. But uh, I believe if we don't know how to speak to one individual, God will never use us to speak to a large crowd, uh, because our personal life must be our personal testimony and we need to be ready to speak to each individual whether it's in the bus in the shop or in the airplane I believe we are called to share the first we are called is to be witnesses he said go and be oh, my witnesses that's the first we are called to that's right so when people have big dreams of speaking at these large conventions they need to just go out their front door and you actually have some testimonies right here in the book where the Lord really spoke to you and grabbed a hold of your heart when it came to focusing on the one person. And the reason God gave you such large platforms is because he taught you well how to, how to have compassion and mercy on the one person. And I know people are watching today and they've got big dreams, but your big dream first starts with being intimate with God. That's and you true. talk a lot about that in the book. Um, share with us a little bit about um, what did God teach you about intimacy with Him, about um, just being in that private place with Him as you prepared for going out and being the evangelist that you are? Yeah, I, I believe, you know, like a child, um, that wants to do something, it goes to the Father and asks Him. Uh, how would He know otherwise what the Father wants Him to do? So I believe before we do anything, we need to know from the Father what He wants us to do. And Jesus Himself as the Son said, I don't do anything what I don't hear the Father say or what I see the Father do. So we need to be in a very close connection into the intimacy with Jesus Christ, with God the Father, to know what we are to do. And out of that intimacy, we, uh, we do what we hear at what we see him to do. So tell us, how did God actually teach you to get into those places with him? In, in, in this book, there's a lot of different testimonies. Share with us uh, one or two that really helped position you. I mean, I, I know uh, you talk about having a brain tumor, actually. I mean, you were healed of some amazing things, and, and now you actually walk in great healing anointing. People are healed all over the world when they come to your crusades. But just share with us a little bit about how God brought you into alignment in the very beginning. 
Well, I must admit, you know, I was raised in a Christian home. I knew everything about God, about evangelism, about healing, about the gospel. But I was dancing uh, a kind of a ballet dance. I was going to church and I was going to parties until I was 15 and with 15 I was fed up. Uh, we, I went to the church meeting one night. There was an evangelistic meeting. An evangelist was preaching and he made an altar call. And I was the first one to go to the front because he said, tonight you need to decide be either be, uh, do it all or give it all or leave it all. And I went to the front. I shook his hand. He smiled at me. I said, I made a decision tonight. He said, wonderful. I said, I'm going to leave it all. And, uh, you know, my parents were sitting in the front row. They broke down. And so I left the church. I ran away from home and I lived a terrible life. And I came into uh, 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 drugs and, and alcohol and all things. And the, according to the Old Testament, I would have been stoned for it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see any hope for my own life. Mm -hmm. And then, I, I, if I may, I, I quickly want to share that because yes. that's the start of my intimacy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was invited to a prayer meeting for, over and over by a young uh, guy, and he always kept telling me, you need to come. I said, I don't want nothing to do with it. And then he was really pestering me. <clears throat> he was a gang leader, and he got saved. And so he came one Monday night again. He said, why don't you come tonight to the meeting? I said, no, if you come again, I'm going to beat you up. I was a fighter. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, then I come next Monday. He, I said, how can you be so stupid to know I'm going to beat you up and to come next Monday again? So he, he said, OK, let's make a deal. You come. I said, I make a deal with you. I come and you leave me alone. Mm -hmm. So I went there not knowing that five young people, that was the big crowd, five young people have been praying uh, for me for weeks and, and fasting for me. My own wife, um, uh, he, she was one of those people. And I went there, they sat down, a girl read a scripture, I don't remember what she read, and then they knelt down to pray. I felt funny, so I also knelt down. The moment I knelt down, it was like the presence of God entered that room. Mm -hmm. I saw myself standing at the edge of a deep valley, and like a mighty force tried to throw me down and kill me. And suddenly I saw on the other side, uh, a cross lifted up, raised up, and the hand of Jesus came towards me and said, and I heard it physically, audibly, I heard it, Siegfried, take my hand, this is your last chance. That was the night I gave my life to Jesus. I don't know how long I was laying there flat on my face. I had an encounter with the living God, with Jesus Christ. I got set free from all uh, drugs and everything. I got saved, I got washed and cleansed, and I got filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that very night. Night. Mm -hmm. And that's where the intimacy started. I said, these moments I will never, ever miss in my own life. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, we're going to have time in this program. I want you to pray for people because I know that there's people that are watching now and they're thinking my life is so much a mess. There's no way that God would have me. There's no way that he cares about me. There's no way that he would want me to be a part of his life. And not only did he come down and meet you right where you were at, but then he <clears throat> deposited in you purpose and destiny. Yes. So you would begin to make choices and decisions that would set you on the right path that he had for you. That's thrilling. That's amazing. I know the same thing happened to me. I think if we were to line up so many people and ask them what their testi testimonies are, majority would be that they felt that they were in the pit and yeah. he just came. He's so good. He loves us so much. He meets us in that place. And then he lifts us up and he pulls us out True. to position us for the great things that he has for us. And you share that in the book in so many different ways. And so we're going to go into that too as well, because I want people to know about, um, you know, the, the healing, the great healing that you've gotten. And you've seen many healings happen yes. uh, in, in the Crusades, but even caring for the one person. And that's exactly uh, what the Lord would do. I had an opportunity to interview Heidi Baker recently, and I, I love her. And um, she says the same thing. She says it's about the one person yes. that no matter uh, what kind of platform it is that God has called you to, if you can't care for the one person, then you shouldn't have 
the great platform that you want to have, you know? And so this is a learning time. It's a teaching time. It's a time for us to grow. I want you to search your hearts at home. You've been called into ministry, many of you that are watching, or you've been called into specific aspects of helping the earth and advancing it. We'll begin to start asking those questions. And we'll be right back in just a few moments. We're going to go there a little deeper. Are you in need of personal counseling or coaching or would like some direction and encouragement? Dr. Candice is a board certified counselor who walks in the gifts of prophecy and healing, and she wants to mentor you. In her School of the Supernatural, Dr. Candice will teach you through her e-courses, books, and many other additional resources that will help you strategize and release heaven in every area of your life. Her classes on the supernatural will equip you to live in the heavenly realms on a daily basis. You can also schedule some personal time with Dr. Candace, where she will encourage and pray for you in private 45-minute sessions to help you walk through personal issues in your life and propel you into your purpose and destiny. Visit her website for all of her resources and follow and subscribe to Dr. Candace on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So we've been talking about the importance of focusing on the one person when it comes to ministry, because the heart of God is for the one. And so I want Pastor Siegfried to share with us some more scripture and some more stories about the importance of the one, because when you grab a hold of this, God is calling you into a place of serving Him, and it's about serving the one. So if you can learn um, and, and understand some of these testimonies and some of these scriptures, you will be drawn into a place of growing into loving the one. So yes. share with us. Yeah, well, I, I would like to share a very short story from the Bible. You all know that story. It's about Zacchaeus. You know, it, he was not liked by the people. They, everybody looked down on Zacchaeus and there was the street where Jesus was supposed to come and they were lining up the fans of Jesus and they didn't allow Zacchaeus to get through. And then Zacchaeus, we know the story, climbed on a tree. And what amazes me is that, that when Jesus came, he did not look down to, to Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. but Jesus looked up to them. And I believe so many people are being looked down at. Mm -hmm. And today I believe Jesus looks up to each one of us. He looks up and he says, I love you. Come down. I want to look into your eyes. I want to talk to you uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a very short story. Yeah. What, what really touched me, I was in one of the North African countries. That's my main focus. Mm -hmm. And I was in the hotel. Uh, God told me to go there, called me. I went there. I was praying, kneeling in my hotel room. Suddenly the voice of God comes and he says, go to the window and look out. What do you see? Uh, I heard the voice of God, so I obey. I go to the window, I open it, and I look down, I look up. You know, uh, my background is supernatural experience with the Holy Spirit. So I thought I see something a writing on the wall, on the yes. sky. There was nothing. I look down, nothing. Oh, I must have misheard or I misunderstood. I go back, I kneel down, I continue praying. I'm in the presence of God. I hear the voice of God. Go and look out of the window. What do you see? I jump up. I go to the window. I look down. Nothing. I look up. There is nothing. And that moment I said, Lord, there is nothing. Just people. The moment I said just people, it was like a, a, a knife was put in my heart. I fell down on my knees. I cried like a little baby. I immediately knew what God wants to tell me. Mm. And I said, I will never, ever say just people because each one of those precious people was somebody Jesus died for. And I want you to know that Jesus died for you, no matter how you feel, no matter what people talk about you, tell you, see in you, Jesus loves you. And he gave his life for each one of us for you. Mm, that is powerful. I know the Lord is speaking to you right now. You know what I was picking up when you were talking is again, the, the heart of the Father is that all of us shall be saved yes. and come to know Him. And it takes the voice of the evangelist, the one, and, and all of us are evangelists from the aspect that we are witnesses of what God has done in our own life. You have a testimony, and the testimony that you have is so powerful that when God puts you in certain 
places. That particular testimony is going to draw people to know him. And as they are drawn to know him, you're going to know more about what it is that he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. In your book, you had so many different encounters, but each one helped you know more about your personal destiny. You had, you were on quite a pathway and quite a journey. You would step out in certain areas and then God would move you around. Uh, you were even willing to follow to taking secular jobs and other things that were outside the realm of what people would consider to be ministry. And then all of a sudden, through those relationships, God redefined things yes. and pulled you in. Can you share some of that with us? Well, I've, you know, I've, I never wanted to become an evangelist per mm -hmm. se. I was a witness uh, from the day I was saved. I stood on the marketplace and, and shared my testimony. And I went into full-time business and I, I asked the Lord, why do I need to do that? That's not really what I want to do. I would love to do something else. Looking back today, I see in the different um, companies I was working, how God prepared in an architectural office I was working. Later on, when I joined Evangelist Bond, and we build buildings, we change things. Uh, it needed that what I had learned, the skills there. I, I was uh, in, in business, of course, um, a managing uh, a director of a company. So it was all about accounting, about financing, about balancing and so on. So when I joined Reinhardt's ministry and until today, I'm still in charge of the African uh, Crusade Treasures uh, for Christ for All Nations, working and helping them um, as a freelancer. So I see that every time I did something, even though I did not really like it. Looking back, I see that God has a purpose and I want to tell everyone who watches this show mm -hmm. uh, is that God has a plan for your life. And I, I met a young guy, he got saved. He said, I know what God wants me to do. I said, wonderful. One year later, I met him. I said, how is it going? He said, well, it's not going well. I said, what do you do? He, I started off and then I, I, I had difficulties. So I, he changed a little bit. He had difficulties again. He changed a little bit. After one year, he was at the very same spot he stood one year ago. And that's the problem with many young people. God is calling you, you go and obstacles, difficulties come and you stop or you change. Don't change. Mm -hmm. Stay come focused on. on what the Lord has told you to do no matter what. He will help you to overcome the obstacles. He will help you to stay focused and stay on in line with His will. That is so important. You're so right. People are stopping so much along the way and, and they're thinking that they're off the path. Our journey is very, very long. Of course, the Lord sees the end yeah. and he is leading and guiding us. And even through the secular positions you had, each and everything was leading you to the seat that you're sitting True. in today. Yes. And the same thing goes for you watching. Everything that's happening to your life right now it is not a waste. You might look at it and say, well, this is a waste. Or you might look at it and say, hey, this is great. Whatever, where, wherever you are on that continuum, the fact of the matter is God is using all of it for his purpose and for his plan in the earth. And he needs you. He needs you on his team. You have been called with a purpose and a destiny, a plan and a hope for your future. He is a good, good father and he is setting you up for that. And so take everything that you've experienced and position yourself for how God intends to use you, not only now, but in the future. Now, one other aspect that I, that I want to bring up is, is the aspect of being in relationships with people or having the accountability structures that are necessary to help us pursue our destiny. Yeah. Well, I believe uh, accountability is, is very important. I I've have always had people who were superior. I was uh, on the board of the Pentecostal European Fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, among their leadership, even with Reinhardt and, and even now um, being an evangelist, uh, I'm a member of a local church and I'm under the authority of a pastor and of course uh, involved also in a denomination. So accountability is very important, I believe. Uh, we need to allow people to look into our life, to be open. Uh, I'm also very much uh, for friendship. Uh, we need to allow uh, somebody to look into us, to speak into our lives so that we don't fall, uh, that we, we need to allow people to correct us, especially as evangelists. When we travel the world, sometimes alone in the hotel room, um, you know, exhausted, coming from the crusade, and then what do you do there? Um, there is a big temptation.
temptation, and I believe it's very important then to have somebody you can talk to, um, who can speak into your life to to allow to correct you. Um, so it's two ways: it's the intimacy with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, always. But then to have somebody on our side, also here, um, friendship and accountability. I believe that's very important. All right, you're listening to it here. Friendship and accountability are very, very important to knowing your destiny. If you need additional friendship and accountability, we want you to reach out to our ministries, callingministry.org or candacesmithman.org. We want to help you know your path to destiny. Dr. Candace Smitheman is an international prophetic voice, healing minister, author, and pastor who travels the world sharing how to access the heavenly realms and live the resurrected life. Her passion is to see people healed and delivered and come into a knowledge of who they are in Christ as royal heirs seated with Him in the heavenly realms. She believes everyone can access heaven and walk in the power of God. In her meetings, your faith will increase and you will feel the presence of God and see miraculous healings. Dr. Candace loves to teach and train in the supernatural and mentor you in the glory. She offers many classes in her School of the Supernatural where you too can learn to release heaven, the glory, and walk in the power of God. She's also a mentor life coach and founder of Dream Mentors International, an organization that teaches and trains biblical life coaches. Check out her website and subscribe to her YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook for more resources. One of the most important aspects of knowing your destiny is staying connected with the Holy Spirit. And in Pastor Siegfried's book, he shares a particular quote that I want to share with you because I'd like for you to elaborate on this. There's a chapter in the book called The Wick and the Oil. And you say that we are to stay connected to the source, which is the Holy Spirit. And you give John chapter 15 as part of that. So he and us and us and him, we're to allow Jesus to cut us from time to time. It is not the size of the wick that protrudes out of the candle that makes the light shine bright. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If you stay short but connected, the light will shine and affect the whole area. So yeah. share with us a little bit about that quote. Well, you know, I know young people, they want to become famous as, uh, in business or the same in the spiritual life. They want to become known. They want to have a big stage mm -hmm. and, and so on. Um, and I think there is a danger in it because if we become big uh, in ourselves, it's just a lot of smoke and no light. And Jesus says, you are the light of the world, not the smoke of the world. Mm. Um, there's many times a lot of noise and a lot of smoke. Uh, but there is no power visible in the life of people. So if we stay connected like the wick in, in the oil, you know, it's kind of filled with the oil. So the oil is being uh, drawn up to the top and then it's the oil actually that burns, that becomes uh, shiny. And uh, if we keep ourselves short, we allow him to cut us then we will shine. And I asked myself, you know, how can I be in him and he in me? It was puzzling me even as a child. I asked myself, you know, how can that be I in him? Jesus come into my heart, yes, but uh, how can that be? I was in, in Florida. There was a little town, Tarpon Springs, and there is Greek sponge divers. Mm. And they told me they get the sponge. It's a living being, the sponge, and they cut it from the ground. They bring it up and it's very soft, it's wonderful, it's, it's cool because it's filled with water. But after a certain time, the water runs out, it becomes hard and harsh and dry and nobody wants to use it anymore. And that was a principle for me. If we stay in where we are called to be, connected to the soil, connected to the ground, connected to, to the source actually, to the Holy Spirit, then the water is in the sponge and the, the sponge is in the water. And and then we become the water for the world and we can have something to give to this world. 
Oh, that is really, really powerful. But you know, especially when you consider people who are called to ministry, there's so often that they, um, because of the busyness of their work, or whether you're called to ministry or not, just the busyness of life in general, will pull you away from being in the water or um, pull you away from being in that fiery place with God where you have a soaked, as you would say, the wick soaked in the oil so that it's ready to spark. But I like how you said, um, if you stay short but connected, the life is going. The light is going to shine, and so I think that that's really, really important because I think we think we need to have some really long wick that's going to outreach everywhere. You just need to be responsible for what God has given you. Yeah. You know, and and we're all responsible for a certain sphere of influence until God moves us to a, another sphere of influence, whatever that is. And so we need to be responsible right where we're at, and it's it's a God's desire for us to stay as a wick saturated in the oil or stay as a sponge saturated in the water. And, you know, I had this training early on uh, in my walk with the Lord as I was stepping out into ministry. Uh, I would get dried out very easy and the Lord was like, you're doing it wrong. You shift into ministry. You need to just stay with me the entire time and I'll take care of all this. Yeah. But it's a mind shift. You have to come to that place of really realizing that you're stepping into a place that you shouldn't be and then begin to get back into that right place and then you'll start to see the fire or you'll start to see yeah. the water coming I, I mean the obedience mm -hmm. I believe it's it's very important in our ministry obedience when I got saved and I had shared my testimony five days after I got saved one of the older people like me today came put his arm around me very loving guy and he said you know I'm so happy when I was young I was also burning like that mm -hmm. and that morning about 42 years ago I made a vow to God I said let never in my life come a day where I will say once I have also burning like that and I can tell you until until today, my family is my witness. I, uh, the fire has never ceased. It has become hotter and hotter. We have become more crazy for Jesus. Why? Because we are not producing the fire, but the fire is within us if we stay connected to him. Amen. Well, I want, to, want you to pray right now. Yes, I believe the most important thing is not how big our ministry is. The importance is how close we are to Him. And I pray that you stay close to Him, that you remain connected to Him and allow the river of life, as the Bible says, rivers of life will be flow out of your innermost being. And I will pray with you right now that the Holy Spirit, the anointing of mm -hmm. God will flow. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the anointing will flow not only into your life, but through your life and out to your life into a lost and dying world. I pray that you remain focused and stay in the call where Jesus has put you and placed you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, amen. Amen. Answer that call. If you're feeling drawn to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, listen, we all make mistakes. We all get off the path of destiny. We all begin to move into areas that we shouldn't be. Get yourself back in alignment with Him. All you have to do is just confess with your mouth that yes. you need Jesus. I need you. That's all you need to say. Messiah, I need you. And at that moment, He will begin to uh, bring forth that fire, bring forth that connection and realign you with him and his purpose and plan for your life. It's very, very important to God that you be in a deep and abiding relationship with him. It brings him joy. He, he's majestic and his majesty swells when we are in relationship with him. So don't leave this TV until you've made a personal choice and decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Again, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. Are Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and the Word says that you will be saved. Yes. And so I just want to encourage you today, take Messiah's hand. He is there. He wants you to follow Him. He's got a plan, purpose, and a destiny for you. It is good. It is a good plan. No matter where you're at right now, when you grab a hold of Messiah's hand, He will walk you straight in to your path of destiny.